And hello, welcome back to the Cisco Secure Cloud Native Security Spot On series. My name is Evan Nicholas, and I'm a cybersecurity architect from Cisco Systems. And today we're going to be talking about security analytics and threat detection. In our previous episode, we talked about how to provision the infrastructure. We used infrastructure as a code to provision our AWS Kubernetes cluster, our VPCs, our subnets, our EC2 instances. Today, we're going to learn about how to secure that environment. So security analytics and threat detection. And then the next episode, we'll talk about workload protection and then so on and so on. So let's just recap the architecture that we built. So we built a VPC with a couple EC2 instances, the subnets, the elastic IP addresses, Kubernetes cluster. And then we're now going to secure it with cloud native security. So in today's agenda, what we're going to do is we're going to build a cloud native application, a demo app that we can secure. All right, then we're going to deploy Cisco Secure Cloud Analytics, and we're going to see all the security analytics, the visibility, the threat detection, and the learning that we get from Cisco Secure Cloud Analytics. First things first, though, we need to be able to deploy an app. So we have this cloud native app named Yelp, and Yelp is basically just an app that you can vote on restaurants. Right, click and vote, and which one's the best? It's a three-tier microservices app, so it's basically a web UI running uh, nginx. Uh, we have an application server running Ruby, and we have a Postgres DB and a Redis caching server. And we're going to deploy this app using YAML, and we're going to expose the app on port 30001 on our EKS node. Now let's go deploy it. So if I go into my terminal here, and what we're going to do is I'm going to do an ls-l, and you're going to see we have this Yelp app YAML file, and I'm going to do a kubectl apply dash f yaml dot app right and this is going to deploy the services the namespace the pods for everything in our application so if i do a kube ctl get namespace and you're going to see a namespace of yelp and if i do a kube ctl get services look at this we're not going to see anything in there right but that's because we're not in the namespace. So it's kube ctl get services namespace yelp, and we're going to see all our services that are defined for this application. So the yelp UI, like I said, is sitting on port 30001 and is mapped to port 80 on the container. Cool. And then we're going to do a kube ctl get pods just to make sure the pods are up and running. And they are so awesome. So the next thing we got to do is we actually have to access the application. So when we need to access the application, we need to do it via IP address and this port, right? So where did we get this IP address? If you remember, if we go back to our deployment in um, Jenkins, the initial infrastructure deployment, if I go all the way down to the bottom, there was some outputs and that output is our EKS public IP address. So that's where we're getting the IP address for the EKS worker node. And then we're going to access it on port 30001, right? So I click here and it's going to take me into the app. So let's just click on some buttons and make sure the app is working. And it is. So cool. Okay, let's take a look at secure cloud analytics. So here's the dashboard. And the first thing we want to highlight is the alerts. So we'll drive into the arts a little bit when we uh, kick off some alerts, but this is what we do most of our work, right? We also see a daily traffic trend of what's going on. So Secure Cloud Analytics is baselining the traffic in our environment. Take a look at all the devices and entities that Secure Cloud Analytics sees, the encrypted traffic, the top devices and our top DNS. And we also see some geo, so who and where is accessing our applications, right? The next thing we take a look at is the event viewer. So this really tells us a lot about the flows in our application. So not only in AWS, but inside of our Kubernetes cluster. So what uh, IPs are accessing, what ports, uh, how much data is being sent, how much data is being exfiltrated, what device IDs there are, and things like that. We also do cloud 
posture. So if anything is misconfigured in our AWS account, um, it'll go in here and tell us that there's some bad stuff configured and we need to be able to fix it. And then we also want to take a look at our roles. So via the security analytics, what we're going to do is we're going to assign roles to them entities. So if we wanted to take a look at our EC2 instances, it'll go out and it'll define this all by analytics itself. So we see that we have a couple EC2 instances in our spot environment. And then also, let's say we want to take a look at what Kubernetes pods are running in our environment. We can see that all that here as well. So now let's actually deploy secure cloud analytics into our environment. Let's look at the code first. So if we go into our project, we see we have a main file. And just like with the infrastructure, we're going to build another module for secure cloud analytics. And we're going to source this from modules secure cloud analytics, which is right here and here, and this is where the code is for our module, right? So first let's take a look at main within this module, and this is just defining the providers that we need to deploy our Terraform. And then we also have the variables. So the only variable requirement that we have here is a secure cloud analytics service key. This key is used to communicate from the daemon set that we're gonna deploy inside of the Kubernetes cluster to the secure cloud analytics portal. Right. And then we have the manifest file itself. So here we're going to deploy um, the daemon set as a resource. We also have uh, a whole bunch of security too. So we've got to create a secret key, a service account, and the cluster role binding. And then we're going to deploy that daemon set into here. And really all we need is that key. Okay. So now let's go deploy the daemon set into the Kubernetes cluster. Remember, we want to deploy all this using GitOps. So there are changes that we need to commit. So we are going to commit it. And we're going to remember, we got to use deploy environment to do this. I'm going to commit this. So we should go. We'll push this up. We'll go back into Jenkins here. And we're going to wait until this kicks off. So kicked off. And it's going to start to build the environment. So as you see, we're doing a Terraform init now. That's good. We'll do a Terraform apply. And this should be pretty quick um, because basically all we're doing is building that daemon set. So it should go out, it connect, it's validating the infrastructure now. Then it's saying, hey, we're going to add all these things. See, that was pretty quick. If we go in here, Terraform apply, and then we scroll down to the bottom, you should see that we've added four resources, and here's Secure Cloud Analytics. Here's the daemon set. It's all been added. All right, cool. So now let's go back into Secure Cloud Analytics, and we're going to take a look and make sure that that daemon set is visible from the portal. So I click on this little cloud here. This is going to take me into it. And as you can see, it just started up, so it's red. It should turn green in, a, in about a couple seconds. But we are able to hit it. it. You see the IP address is the same IP address as the EC2 instance. OK, now let's go generate some alerts. So to do that, we're going to use something called NetShoot. And that shoot is basically a throwaway container um, that has a whole bunch of troubleshooting applications in the container itself. We're going to use it specifically for EdMap. But all we really need to do is run this one command, and it's in the GitHub. And we're just going to run this command right here, and it's going to spin this container up in our Kubernetes cluster. And once it spins it up in the Kubernetes cluster, then we'll have a way to actually run scans inside of the cluster, um, which is basically an inside threat. OK, it's up and running. We're doing nmap to 10.0.1.0 slash 24. And we'll do an st. And we're going to run it in here. And this is obviously going to run a scan against that whole network, which is, like I said, our, our Kubernetes cluster network. 
and it's going to come back and obviously it's going to tell us, you know, what ports we're seeing open. Look, it sees that Postgres is open on 5432, which is what our app is running and all that. So what's next? We could also do an SSH within there. So like kind of like a lateral movement. So if we go back into our secure cloud analytics portal, right? I want to go down into settings and basically what we want to do is we want to take a look at alerts, like an internal connection watch list. So what we did here was we created a rule saying, hey, if anybody does an SSH inside this environment, I want to be alerted to it. So if we go back to our, our net shoot and we do uh, an MAP to, let's say, 10.0.1.0 slash 24 and do it on port in 22, right? Now we're going to fire an SSH to all them hosts as well. Okay, so let's go check the alerts. So going back to StealthWatch Cloud, we can see that we have an internal connection watch list hit. We also have an internal port scanner hit, and we have a new IP scanner hit, which is actually pretty cool. Let's go into internal port scanner. Now let's take a look at what kind of information it gives us. So obviously it tells us that you know we have a port scan going on or had gone on. Um, we, we do put the MITRE uh, tactics and techniques here. So we can drill right in here, and it'll give us full visibility into the, the MITRE tactics here and then uh, the techniques. Uh, so this, in this case, was a recon or a discovery tactic. And the technique that was using was, you know, obviously we we're going out and scanning all, all the hosts. Um, we see that the alert has been open and internal port scanner has went out and reached out to all these ports and IP addresses. And we can actually drill down. So you can see here that um, this temp shell container um, we, we have defined it and we also can drill into maybe even the session traffic to dive a little bit more in depth into the flows that are happening during this port scan. So the amount of visibility that's happening here is, is ridiculous um, down to each flow, each communication. So if anything actually deviates from this, then, then we can trigger our alerts. You know, one of the other alerts that happened here was we did, we had a watch list that we set up and that watch list said, hey, if anybody does an SSH on port 22, um, then we want to we wanna be alerted to it. So in this case, um, we had an internal connection watch list that triggered that alert. And this alert is going to tell us pretty much the same thing. Um, I have miters. I have two IP addresses that shouldn't be communicating. Um, we have miter tactics that is persistence, uh, event triggered execution. And we go down and we take a look at all the internal connections that, that we were trying to make. So obviously from that, from that temp shell, we were trying to SSH into all these IP addresses, and uh, we, this is what we are getting back. Okay, so then let's wrap this session up. So what did we find out? So as far as security analytics visibility, we were able to detect indications of compromise. We saw the insider threats. We saw malicious activity. There was some abnormal behavior going on. Um, we tied them back to the MITRE tactics and techniques, and we triggered the alert. So we got all this from Secure Cloud Analytics inside of the Kubernetes cluster. So here are some of the resources that I use today. Obviously we have our GitHub, keep all our code there so you guys can reference it. Um, here is a page to the Secure Cloud Analytics. We also have a free trial that you can do yourself. So uh, you can click on that and get a free trial. Um, also the link to the Yelbat. So there's a GitHub for Yelb, there's a GitHub for Locust, and there's a GitHub for NetShoot. So utilize these tools because they are awesome. Also, make sure you subscribe to the Spot On Series YouTube channel so you can get all these YouTube sessions. Thank you. And our next session around secure workload will be next.